You know what sucks? Health insurance. Specifically health insurance in America. Oh, I'm healthy. I don't need health insurance. Oh, you'll get fined for not having health insurance. Hi there. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. I know your boy has been away. I've been grinding because your boy has to pay bills. You know, paying bills seems to be the only thing we are living for anyway these days. But even the bills couldn't keep me away from doing what I like, which is making videos. So here I am today. What are we going to do today? Today we are going to listen to people's stories about health insurances. This is not the first time we cover this topic on this channel, but every time I hear new stories which are even crazier than the ones before. So without a further ado, let's listen to people ranting about how scammy the insurance companies can be and i will be back in the end to tell you what i think about the topic so stick around i will see you soon let's talk about what a scam american health insurance actually is i know that i have ranted about this in the past but as time goes on it's just getting more and more and more ridiculous and i just can't take it something needs to happen i pay hundreds multiple hundreds of dollars a month for my son and i to have health insurance through my employer my husband is carried on his own health insurance through his employer because if he didn't do that then we would have working spouse fees we've ran financial models and this is the most cost effective way for us all to have adequate health care coverage okay hundreds of dollars a month to have that i got a bill in the mail today from my neurologist's office i had a five minute appointment with him to write me a prescription for my migraine medication because according to my insurance i have to see him every single year in order to get my medication approved through them, which is a, a whole different topic of discussion. I have gone through so many hoops just to get my medication that I need for my migraines approved. Anyways, get the bill in the mail today. I saw that doctor no more than five minutes in his office, okay? $364. Okay, fair enough. Tier one with my insurance company, surely they're going to cover that, right? Wrong. Wrong. My insurance payment to my doctor was zero dollars, zero dollars for a tier one provider. Okay, cool. My provider then discounted it out because I guess the insurance company and them collude. And because the insurance company didn't cover anything, they then discount my bill down to 194. That's my portion I have to pay now. Sounds great, right? No, not really, because me being me, I call my neurologist's office pretending I'm just a new patient, right? And I say, hey, I do not have health insurance. I am self-pay. How much would it be for me to become an established patient in your office? If I come in for an appointment, how much is that appointment so I can plan for it? And they said, yeah, not a problem. Just a heads up. We are running seven months for our next available appointment, but it would be $95 if you come in as self-pay. Okay, thank you. Awesome. So now, can someone explain to me why I'm paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month to carry health insurance that doesn't cover anything for my appointment so the doctor then cuts my bill for me, but it's still double the amount that a self-pay patient would have to pay? Like, in what world does any of that make sense? Why have health insurance at this point? It's a freaking scam. I'm done ranting now. I'm just so annoyed. This is an insurance rant, so if you don't want to hear that, move along. I had a baby a year ago, high-risk pregnancy, so by the time I went to deliver said baby, I had met my out-of-pocket max. So color me surprised when I get a $416 bill from his birth like six months later. So I emailed my insurance and I'm like, hey, definitely met my out-of-pocket max by then. Why are you not covering this? Like, what's going on? It's from having a second surgical assistant during my C-section, which apparently they don't cover. Which how regular smegular citizens are supposed to know this information or even in the moment of having like a very rushed C-section decipher who in that room is not covered by my insurance is insane. I messaged them back and I'm like, uh, yeah, they probably had a second surgical assistant because I basically had three surgeries in one go. You're welcome. You didn't have to pay for anesthesia three times. So of course I come back and say, regardless of the situation, that's not in your policy. We're not going to cover it. Okay. Well, that bill is between the hospital and higher power now because I am not paying it. I'm going to rant for a second. So if you don't want to hear it, beat it. Um, I'm ranting about insurance. I have incurable cancer. It's a very rare cancer, neuroendocrine, and I take a shot to stall disease progression. Just this week, my insurance decides they're no longer going to pay for it, and I can't afford it. It's like a $12,000 a month shot, so we can't afford that, and insurance is refusing to pay, so here I am with cancer, and the only treatment I can no longer receive. 
Although the doctors are fighting for it right now, I'm infuriated and also mind boggled at how they just can treat us like, I don't know, like not even human beings. And I know I'm not alone. I know I can't be alone. And I know other people are out there fighting with their insurance companies for things they probably desperately need. And I see you and I'm sorry that you're struggling because I cannot imagine how you must feel because I know how I feel and it fucking sucks. You know, it's fucking annoying. Health insurance. I've been on the same medicine for a year. And then they said, oh, oh, it's working too good. So stop taking that and let's try something else. Having horrible side effects. Oh, no, no, no. No. They're not bad enough. Keep taking what you're taking. There's no money in healthy people. health insurance and the whole United States health system is bullshit and it pisses me off. Y'all, I have a bone to pick with the insurance companies and the doctor's offices because WTF. So I always, when I go to the doctor, I try to pay them, right? I try to pay for the services that I have received. So I go, I get seen by the doctor. And then when I go to check out, I try to pay them. Like I've always done in the last couple of years, they're like, no, no, we will not take your money here. We will bill you later. And I'm like, okay, cool. Except for that. What happens is well, like, I just got an email. I got an email and it was like, Hey, this bill's at risk of being past due and you don't want to end up in collections. And I was like, no, I certainly do not. Let me go check this out. Tell me why when I click on the thing to take me to the invoice, it just tells me the date of service and the amount of money. It doesn't tell me who. It doesn't tell me what they did. It, it tells me nothing. How am I supposed to pay this? Especially because, y'all, do you guys remember? I broke my foot almost three years ago now. It was August of 2021. Um, and I broke my jaw last summer. Now, the jaw was different because I already paid for all of that. But with the foot thing, y'all, my case is still not resolved, like, with the car insurance, with all of that. So I haven't paid any of these medical bills because I'm waiting on the insurance payout. And then in fact, the lawyers told me they were like, no, no, I don't even know how it works. But like, it's like they have to send the money directly to the doctors in the hospital. I was like, great. I don't even have to deal with it, but I still get invoiced sometimes. So I have to be able to like determine and you would say, yes, because you have the date of service. Well, sure. I have the date of service, but when I broke my foot, it was like several dates of service. So I never quite know. Like I look at this thing and I'm like, I don't know where I was March of 2021 or whenever they're trying to like, why didn't you bill me before? Why is now all of a sudden like, it's like the second notice and it's like at risk of being, y'all just take my money at the doctor's office. Please just take my money when you give me the services because I can't live like this. I It's like a whole second job just trying to figure out do, who do I owe, when, how, y'all get it together. Insurance and doctor, get it together. Let's talk about y'all's country, America, the land of the great, the land of the free, the land of opportunity, right? So I have insurance, y'all. I pay a hundred plus dollars a month on just health insurance, just health insurance. That's not dental. That's not vision. That's just health. Okay. Stay with me. So I injured my leg in Nicaragua. If you watched my vlog, you saw that like I basically fell off the volcano board it was this whole thing. I injured my leg. My leg still hurts really bad. So I have a doctor and I'm like, hey, like I really need to get an MRI. So she gives me the doctor to go to for the MRI. So my MRI appointment is supposed to be tomorrow. These folks called me this morning. Hi, um, we just want to let you know your insurance hasn't went through. I'm like, what do you mean my insurance haven't went through? Because baby, I pay for that insurance every month. So where is it? Where, where is it at? She's like, oh, sometimes it just takes a while. And I'm like, we'll call you back. But right now we have to cancel your appointment. So they cancel my appointment. My appointment, that's for tomorrow. I've been waiting on this appointment for two weeks. Two weeks, y'all, because my leg is still in so much pain. So the lady calls me back a few hours later and she goes, oh, your insurance came through and the out-of-pocket cost is going to be Do you think I have $700 laying around for an MRI? What am I paying insurance for? What, what am I? And then she starts talking about deductibles, deductible. I don't want to hear, I don't, I don't care about deductible. I'm trying to figure out why I'm paying all this money 
health insurance. Oh my gosh, health insurance is such a scam. Living in America is such a scam. She literally says, well, we can set you up with a payment plan. A payment plan? I don't want to pay it. I don't want to pay. It. I don't want to be on a plan. I just don't want to pay it. I don't have a choice because I need to. I need to get my leg checked out. So I'm like, fine, whatever, whatever. I'm like, can you reschedule my appointment? Because I told you they they cancel my appointment for tomorrow. Can you reschedule my appointment for tomorrow at the same time? She goes, oh, that time is no longer available. So you're telling me in the last four hours someone is taking my appointment time that y'all made me cancel? So then she goes, the next appointment is going to be next weekend. So I have to wait another week. Y'all, I'm just, <laughs> I'm so done. I am moving out of America in the next six months and I just cannot wait. Anyway, I love y'all and I hope y'all are having a blessed day. I really love the US medical care system because even if I try to go to an urgent care because I can't get in to see my primary care physician for the next six to eight weeks, they might not take your insurance. And if they don't take your insurance, you gotta call your insurance to find out which urgent care you can go to, which might not be that close to you. Then those urgent cares have so many people waiting in them. You're waiting for three hours. They're cranking through people. You don't get real care. And then once you do get into your primary care physician, you actually have to wait six to eight more weeks to go to the specialist that they're referring you out to. Meanwhile, spending all your money, paying for insurance every single month, and not getting the care that you need. So I'm going to Mexico. Goodbye. So this is my rant about health insurance is a joke this week. Um, and just in the last week, these things are things that I've had to pay for. So I have a mass in my breast and they watch it with a special machine every year um, because it could potentially become cancerous because it's a solid mass. And so I have to have a special machine review, uh, look at it every year. It's $320 cash out of my pocket with my health insurance. My daughter gets infusions um, once every three months for her chronic condition. That's $230 cash out of my pocket every three months for her infusions. My other daughter needs a continuous blood glucose monitor and my insurance won't pay for it because her diagnosis isn't the correct diagnosis, even though it's blood sugar related. So I pay $200 cash out of my pocket every month for this. Insurance is a scam. Hey guys, um, I'm gonna tell you what happened to me yesterday when I tried to get some medicine filled. Y'all get to watch me unload the dishwasher and reload it while I do it because I've gotta get active. Okay, so. I wanted to change out my um, migraine medicine. So the last time I was at my doctor, which was like three weeks ago, before I, we actually went to the beach, I explained I don't like the side effects to Imatrix. I don't know if any of y'all take Imatrix, but I don't like it. So she gave me a sample of Ubrelvi, I think is what it is. Um, anyway, I did have one migraine. I took that medication and... It was great, no side effects. I felt amazing. Okay, so fast forward to a couple weeks later because I wasn't, it wasn't like a necessity to have considering I don't get migraines all the time. So I go to, I, the, well, they rewind. They call me while I'm at the doctor. I mean, while I'm at the beach, the doctor calls me and explains uh, my insurance doesn't cover it. The sales, the sales are up for this UBRLV was there and said I could use the coupon thing. Ugh. I could use the coupon and I would get the medication for free. So now we're gonna fast forward to, I thought, well, I better get that filled. So I had to pre, pre set up the little card, the little drug card they gave me. And so I go to pick it up yesterday. And my pharmacy is amazing. This is not a bad shot at the pharmacy or the doctor. It's a shot at our freaking healthcare in in the United States. So I sit here and I pay, how much do I pay? I mean, I don't even know, that's beside the point. I pay out of my pay paycheck monthly for health insurance. It's already bad enough that we have, if you're paying monthly, then you have to turn around and pay for medications, correct? So, come to find out with this Ubrelvi, that coupon only works if your insurance actually pays some of the medication, okay? All right, stay with me. If it pays some of the medication, the coupon takes care of the rest, so it wouldn't cost you much. But because my 
PHIP, it's school insurance, pays zero. It does not cover any of the medication. Would y'all like to know how much this medication was gonna cost for 10 pills? 10 pills, 10 just migraine pills. Think about it for a minute. It was over $1,000 for 10 pills. <coughs> I immediately said, huh, not stop. Don't feel that, don't feel that. Um, when I go back to my doctor, um, I'm gonna just go ahead and just request another kind, something that's actually covered. But my whole point behind this is, why, why? I don't understand why. We sit here and pay monthly, we pay monthly. Um, I don't even go to the doctor very often. I just mainly go for blood work to make sure medications are okay and not damaging any major organs in my body. But why, why is our, why is insurance not cover stuff? It is freaking migraine medicine. It, it makes no sense to me, no sense to me whatsoever that insurance doesn't cover everything. Anyway, that's my soapbox for today. Um, something's got, something's got to give, something's got to change. Because that's like a needed medication. If you've had migraines before, you know dang straight that you can't function without good medication. So, not to say that that's the only thing out there that's great. Imitrex just doesn't work for me. I don't know about y'all, it gives me this feeling like of heaviness in my, it's like in this whole area and I feel like, I feel like I'm hungover. If, if, if it gets rid of the migraine, I feel like I'm tag I'm hungover for like the next eight hours. I don't want that. I can't do that. Like I don't take off work uh, because I have a migraine. I'm gonna take the medicine and I'm gonna keep trucking. Like I don't, I'm just not one to call in sick. So we gotta do better about being able to cover medication that helps people. Like I don't get it. Anyway, I'm sorry. I don't normally like to use this platform to be negative. But I'm curious to know if anybody else has these issues where you sit here and pay flipping insurance monthly and then daggum, you can't even get something covered. It's just ridiculous. Anyway, y'all have a great day. So I don't know what's more surprising, the fact that insurance companies are a scam or the fact that these people just found out now because <laughs> I was aware of this for so long. So before everyone rants as a patient on why endometriosis surgeons have to go out of network and try to fight insurance companies and take, um, you know, payments for office visits and things like that, please understand that it's not our choice. We would love to be paid by insurance companies properly for the work that we do and the hours we stand in the OR and the time and minutes and hours I spend with patients in the office, sometimes one to two hours per visit, uh, but they will not pay for these things. And they want us to show up and do these things for free as if a patient could go or a person could go to a mechanic and never pay to have their car fixed or a hair salon and have a haircut or hair highlights for three hours and not pay or a massage and cancel the appointment or use the appointment for two hours and not actually pay for it. None of these services are done for free, right? And healthcare is not a free for all for services, even though we all pay a premium, just like we do with homeowners insurance. When a tree falls on your house and you pay your deductible, they're supposed to pay. This is a bigger fight. Um, and with health insurance, it's no different. Just because we pay premium every month does not mean that they're ever going to pay your doctor. It's now 516. I've already wasted over an hour fighting with insurance companies today, and I'm done with that. Okay. I'm going to be ranting about insurance companies today because it is just getting so ridiculous. Every day, every time I get into the clinic, I have a stack this thick of insurance companies telling me what I should and what I should not prescribe my patients. And they have no medical background whatsoever. They're just going by guidelines. Sometimes those guidelines do not apply to every patient. If you're a provider, you will understand my pain. I put that patient on that medication for a reason. There's these new medications that are coming out in the market that are just amazing and they're just so unaffordable for patients. What's the point of having these new medications if you can't afford them? And then the other thing I want to rant about is if you have been on a medication for 25 years, 
why in the hell are insurance companies asking for pre-authorization? You approved them for 25 years. Nothing has changed. Why now all of a sudden you need a pre-authorization? That just takes time out of my day that I could be spending with my patients. Rant over. Now, I'm not sure if I said this before, but on a daily basis, I work with hospitals across the U.S. and Canada. And almost every day, we seem to have at least someone who loses it when he goes to the hospital and finds out that, you know, the insurance is not going to pay for his services. You know, now I work with migrants who, you know, can't speak English and most of them sometimes do not know how the system works in the united states because obviously they can't speak english but they are forced to pay that insurance right now it usually goes like this someone goes to the hospital or to the primary care doctor and the doctor is like you know what i can prescribe you x medicine but it usually has side effects on you so the alternative of x medicine is y medicine but why medicine is not going to be covered by your insurance and these migrants by the way we are talking about legal migrants not illegals uh, who usually pay that insurance every month without understanding much technicalities about it they just go there hoping that the insurance is going to cover everything and they just find out that you know some services will not be covered and they just lose it they're like why the heck do i pay the insurance every month and the insurance can't pay for all my medical services which i understand it makes no sense like why like really why do you have to pay every month and then when you go to the hospital or to the doctor they are like you know what before anything else before we pay anything you have to take money out of your pocket and pay it first and then we cover the rest or we not even cover this particular service and it's like bro the fuck you know it just doesn't make sense something that i see people saying that could solve this is universal health insurance personally i believe it's not also the ideal solution i mean would it be better yes it would but universal health insurance is when you look at countries which have universal health insurance i've been to turkey right I lived in Turkey for almost six or seven years and they have universal health insurance. But the downside of it is first increased tax, which is okay. Anyway, we are paying for insurance anyway. So, you know, adding that money to the taxes doesn't also change much. But then you realize that the system kind of get weird in the way that you can have a simple headache and the doctor will give you an appointment for like five months or 10 months later. And you are like, I have a headache. How am I going to fucking wait for like eight months to see a doctor just for a headache? You know, because then the system kind of gets so uh, saturated, if I would say, to the point that you can't get an early appointment when you need it. And also, sometimes they limit how much time each doctor's visit can last let's say they say like oh you know you can't spend more than five or ten minutes with the doctor in the consultation during one appointment i would love to hear what you have to say about this i would love to hear what you think could be the solution to these insurance scams and all that let me know what you think about the topic let me know what you think about insurance let me know your personal stories about health insurances as always thank you very much for watching this video up to here i really appreciate every support you do to the channel i appreciate the financial support that some of you have been uh, sending my way and remember i do have super thanks i do have membership ships open so if you are able to financially support the channel you can do so and uh, as always i will see you in my next video so see you